curve on that thing. Like, they're pretty strong now. What we're gonna go through now is we're gonna show you how to do some swarming. So XAG's big feature is that they can swarm multiple drones at once. Capped it now to a minimum of two drones just because they're so efficient now you don't need to have more than two. We used to do five and that was pretty hairy, a lot going on. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna run through a quick thing on how to do it, how we do it, and what we find it works the best for most people. You do need a special license to do these. It's a certificate of approval uh, from CASA. So now they have changed it where you don't need to get new approvals. You, they don't need to come and watch you fly it. You can just lodge the paperwork and they'll, they'll do it. So that's only just changed in the last few months. So you can just send in the paperwork of your procedures in place for swarming and then they'll just approve it without having to do that whole uh, coming out and watching you do the swarming. How to do swarming, we find is, or how to do it properly, is setting up your drones in the right area. So you can see here, we've got one drone on the right, one drone on the left, uh, left and right. And what we're gonna do, we're actually gonna split the field up into two. So you can have it where you can just send it off in the same field, send one on the one half and one on the other half. But with, because of their algorithms now, they try and be as smart as they can, the drones. So they'll try and start where they know is the most efficient path. Sometimes that may be in the path of another drone. So now what we do, we just split the field in half. So you'll see on our map here, we've actually split the field in half. We've got two little fields in front of us and we've got the the right drone, he's gonna do the right side of the field and the left drone's gonna do the left side of the field. So that's a big thing. We never have the drones crossing paths at all. Um, it's just a thing that is in case uh, all the, all, everything goes flat, uh, you can't control the drones at all. It's just another uh, precaution that we put in place so the drones never cross paths. If they do have to cross a path, we make sure they're going at different heights. So if the return to home and going to the job is the same path, we have them going at different heights so that if they do cross paths and everything goes flat, your controllers are all flat, um, you've got no, safe, no backups, they won't hit each other. In saying that though, the obstacle detection will sense each other as well, but we don't 100% rely on that like we've said. Um, it's just a backup, backup, backup. So, what we've done here now, you'll see on the phone here, we've split it in two. We've got, um, which one's this drone? We've got Big Benny. On this side, on the left, we've got Billy on the right. Uh, so a big thing as well, we find is a lot of people, when they think of swarming, they think, oh, you know, two drones flying together side by side, spraying a bigger swath. That's not the most efficient way to do it, and it doesn't work like that. So what we do is we alternate them. So one's going out, one's coming back in. That way, you're not having them both land at once. You're not having one sit there while the boys fill up the other one. You, otherwise, you'll, you'll lose that efficiency straight away there. So having them alternate, one's out spraying, one's coming back, or they're both out spraying, but they come back at different times is what makes it efficient. A big thing as well, if you are, if, if two of them are on the ground and you go to take one off, make sure there is no one near both of them because it has happened and it probably will happen if you go to do it, you'll accidentally send the wrong, wrong one off. So that's a big thing. Don't have anyone standing near them. You just tell the boys, right, oh, we're taking off. Um, don't have them standing near both of them. Uh, you know, you might think, oh, we're gonna take that one off, they'll start filling that one up. Just get them out of the way for five seconds, let it take off, and then you'll be all clear. Otherwise, if it goes to take off and someone's there, you can have issues. So um, just make sure no one is there on both of them when you go to take off. Because if you're anything like me, I get confused pretty easily, and you can take the wrong one off. So, on the screen here, you'll see down the bottom, it's quite easy how it all works. So we've mapped out a normal, a normal map here. We've divided it in two. We've gone through that in the past on how to do that. But now down the bottom, you see we've got two drones down the bottom. We've got Big Benny and Billy down the bottom. So we've got two. It's like a little tab down the bottom. It, it's coming up at the moment telling me that the drones aren't in RTK mode because we're just putting them in VRTK. But that's right, we're just going to operate in VRTK here. So it's like a little computer tab. Down the bottom, you've got the two names of the drones. So you'll see Big Benny, this is all his settings here. And this is the field he's gonna do. When I click over to Billy, click that off, and you'll see that's his, he's gonna do that side of the field. So that drone there, Billy is gonna go to the right-hand side. Benny's gonna go to the left-hand side. So just simple things like that make, make it a lot easier to use. Um, <clears throat> so, to fly it, it's exactly the same as you would with a normal, when you're doing a normal operation. Um, it's, it, there's no different, you're not having to do, all you have is two tabs pretty much. It's like a computer, you go in and out of the tabs. 
depending on which one you want to use. It's like opening Microsoft Word and your emails, you know, you're going in between the two windows. <clears throat> so that's how they've made it and it's very simple and it's very easy like that. We've been using this sort of system now for five years doing the swarming and it's very easy to use. So I'm going to do a demonstration here anyway. So all I'm going to do, I'm just going to make sure that we are flying because I've got no water in there. So I'll just do fly only. I'll just go start operation, tick, tick. <clears throat> that one's going to go. So that's one on the right here. <clears throat> So that one's off and away now. So what we can do now, you can see the entry and exit of that field, it's not gonna go into the other one's field. So that's just a big thing on making sure that they don't enter each other's fields. It's just another safety thing that you don't have to worry about. If, if it's not going in that field, you're not gonna have to worry about what it's doing, if that makes sense. Just one less thing to worry about. So we'll just go over to Benny now. We'll just go start operation on him. And you can see what I've done as well, I've put his entry and exit path a lot more to the left because if he's more to the right, the more they're just getting a bit too close. And if you have big gusts of winds and something like that, it's just, an, just another thing we don't have to worry about. So I've made his entry and exit point just onto the left there. So if I hit start operation now, tick, tick. You can see Billy's over there. He's still working at the moment. We're gonna stand back from this one. And that's how you fly two drones at once <laughs> with one controller. We've got the paths set here too that they're spraying. We've just got it set slow, otherwise they'll done a tiny field that they'll run out pretty quickly. What they're doing there now, those two drones should not hit each other and they will not hit each other what they've got doing there. So flying the two at once uh, is a huge production increase, like, or doubles it really. Uh, on our bigger jobs, um, you know, over that 100 hectares, we'll pretty much always fly two drones at once. It's just, you increase that productivity by twice. Big thing, there's a few ways you can do it also. You can see we're doing the two here at the moment. So, at the moment, we're flying two drones off one controller. Now, the big thing to remember, if you're doing it off one, like you can do it off one phone, but we're actually doing one actual controller, if that makes sense. So, the problem, if you're doing it with one controller, if you have to take over emergency of it, you have to do it off the phone. You've only got actual manual control of one drone itself. If you want to move the other one, you have to use the actual phone to do that. In saying that though, if it runs low in battery or if it runs out of liquid or um, it finds an obstacle, it's just going to come home anyway. Like it's got all those safety precautions in there anyway. So <clears throat> there is another way you can do it with, you can do two controllers and one phone. Um, but you do need that 4G network to do that. So you just put the SIM card in the phone and the, the controllers. So that's another way you can do it like that too. But if it's anything like what we are here, five Ks out of town, we get no internet. So that's just a big thing that we do is we just use one actual controller to operate them both. All you're doing is just doing a link. So you're pairing the drone, uh, the controller uh, to each drone and then you're good to go. Right, so that's just a quick run through anyway of swarming two drones with one controller. Uh, it's legal now, it's a lot easier now as well, it's just changed, CAS has changed a lot of things for us. Um, so yeah, a simple, easy thing to do, just make sure you be cautious with it. Um, setting it up is the biggest thing on it, if you don't set it up properly, you're going to have problems. Set it up properly and you'll get double the efficiency. That's a pretty cool shot, two drones swarming at once. <laughs>